In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at my project settings and what I'm using for my quest because there's been a lot of questions about this topic in the Discord. So for this video, I'm just going to use the custom VR template I've been working on. Just so you know, if we go through and we have a look at target hardware, this is just the desktop version of the VR template. The only thing that is currently different in this version. So my support platform is set to Android. And if we go to Android, I just have it set to 25. I haven't done anything else. So everything else is set to default. So what I thought we'd do is we'll go through this one. We'll have a look at these project settings and we'll see the difference between a desktop version of the template and what it's running at on the quest compared to optimized project settings. And to do that, I'm just going to use the Oculus desktop app. So this is the Oculus developer application for Windows. And you can see here, if I put my fingers over the sensor on the headset, we can actually see at what levels the, the CPU and the GPU are hanging out at on the headset. So currently CPU is 20%, GPU is 99, and this is just on the home environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a build for this project using the default settings that we've already got, and then we can have a look and compare them to the end. So to do that, I'm just going to go to Project Launcher, Android ASTC, by the book, you know the, you know the drill, and then we'll set it up from there. Excellent. So we've got the project in the headset. So if I put it on my head, we should see it updates once it loads. There we are. We're loaded into the scene. You guys can't see this, but we can see that we are currently at, again, 20% for CPU, and GPU is around 99, go to about 98. I think to pay depending where I look in the scene. So if I rotate around so I'm facing the back wall, it might actually drop the GPU down. Nope, that didn't do anything. Now what we can do is we can go through those project settings and we can see what we can get. So all the settings that I'm going to show you are ones that I'm using in current projects. Excellent. So the first thing we're going to do is going to open up project settings. If you're partway through a project, I'd be careful with the settings that you use. Um, test all of these on a blank template first, just so you know that they're working, and then you can implement them into your own project. Okay, so same as normal, we're going to go through maps and modes, make sure we've got a game mode, game instance if you've got one, and we're going to hit the drop down. We're going to make sure our level's correct. We can then go to packaging, and in here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the drop down, and we're going to select cook only maps, exclude editor content. And if you're doing movies or anything, so 360 movies or 2D videos, make sure to exclude movies when staging, and then you can import them as well. I'll do another video on them in a bit, so keep an eye on the channel for that. So we've set it to list of maps to include, so we need to select our motion controller map, which for me is in my maps folder. And you want the .u map. If you've seen the other videos, you know how to do it here, but you've already been through it all. And just make sure to add every level that you use. If you're using a persistent level, make sure you've got the sub levels in there as well. It takes a little while, but it's worth doing. So build. When we get to build, it's mainly the build configuration that we've got to think about. Obviously, if you're shipping a game, definitely do shipping, but that will disable stuff like line traces, debugging stuff. So you got to be careful what you use just in case you can't see it. And something to do at the very end. So something I didn't mention in previous videos is blueprint nativization method. So what this does is actually converts all of your blueprints into C++ code, so native. So rather than it running a .u project or a .u asset, I believe it is, it'll actually convert to C++ and it just makes your code so much faster. When I use this, I put it onto inclusive, so it does everything. But that did add about 10 minutes to the build time for the project going onto the headset. So I recommend doing that at the end, once you're, you're happy with everything, then definitely enable inclusive. So in this case, I'm going to do it just for this example. Next step, support platforms. We know we're on Android, so I've got that ticked. Target hardware. So this is the part where if you set it up for desktop, we're going to need to change this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to desktop change it to mobile, and then maximum quality, we're going to set the scalable 2D or 3D. This is all the settings that I've showed you previously, but this is how you can change them in the editor. And we're just going to hit apply later, because there's some more changes we're going to make. So the next thing to do now is if we scroll down, we're going to look for rendering, and this is where we're going to do most of our, uh, most of our changes. So all the settings that I'm going to use in here are current settings that I'm using for client projects. So I know these work on my machine and my headset. 
and especially for what I'm after, but just keep that in mind. Um, for this example, I'm not going to use mobile MSAA because it actually drops down the performance in the headset. So when we test the debugger and we look at our CPU and GPU percentages, we won't really see much of a difference because this will put it back up to 99%. So I suggest disabling this, getting our CPU and GPU low as possible, and then at the end you can put this back on and you'll have a better understanding of where it's at. So first thing I'm going to do is support software occlusion culling and we're going to use game discards unused material coil levels. If we're not using the materials, we don't need three individual levels. And you can see here it says unchecked, keep all quality levels in memory, allowing a runtime quality level change, which is default. But uh, if we check it, it says discard unused quality levels when loading content from the game, saving some memory. So we're going to save some memory there, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So we we'll scroll down. The next one is reflection capture resolution. This changes based on what kind of project you're after. If you need reflections like ArcViz or something fancy, then probably keep this as default. I wouldn't go any higher. But if you're just doing a normal project and you don't really need it, I would suggest going 64. So we half that. And we're also going to enable forward shading. This will help reduce our shader count, I believe it is. So we're going to do that and it's going to change some stuff for us later. Now this is somewhere that you'll see most of the changes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable custom depth stencil pass because I don't need it. And it actually works pretty well for performance. I'm also going to disable depth with temporal AA jitter because it only works with post processing. And in this case, we're disabling it. And now what we can do is we can also disable apply pre exposure before range of scene color. And we can set our anti aliasing method to MSAA, which only works with forward shading enabled. I did actually also change my frame buffer pixel format to 8 bit rather than 10 bit with 2 bit alpha because I didn't really need it. So set that to 8 bit. And as we go through, we then hit the optimization tab. And in here, what I do is I deselect render unbuilt preview shadows in game because what this does is if you build your lighting, and then push it to the headset. If something hasn't built correctly, it'll use dynamic lighting, so it'll impact performance. Whereas if you disable it, and then you put it on the headset, you know where it needs to be built. Now, early Z pass. So I actually set this to none, which works pretty well for mine. Hardware clear for a clear scene is fine. And if you're working with particles and stuff, I found enabling particle cutouts by default works pretty well. So a project I'm currently working on is using Niagara. So I've got that working on the headset. I'm not going to show you how to do it in this one because it beats the point of optimizing because it's not very optimized. So we'll just keep going. And then if you guys want to see how to do Niagara particles on the headset, then let me know and I'll do it. I'll do a video on that covering the subject. So G buffer format. I actually force this to eight bits per channel. So it's just less than the default. And then if you've got morph targets, I actually delete those because I, I don't need them and then leave them disabled as well. So that's it for our optimizations group. Now, the next one is to actually disable mobile HDR. This will cause a big hit to performance and then use mobile multi-view. So what we're doing is we're using instant stereo and then mobile multi-view to just bring that down a little bit. And I also do round robin occlusion queries. So if there's anything outside of the screen, it should be hidden. The next step is shader permutations reduction and mobile shader permut permutation reduction. If there's something here that you don't need, then I highly recommend disabling it because it's just being used for the sake of it. So on mobile, I actually have support combined static and CSM shadows disabled, as well as support pre-baked distant field shadow maps and support movable directional lights. So I'm going to do that on here and we'll see how it looks. We might have to come in and turn these back on if needed. So for example, our light source is set to stationary. We can probably set this to static and then we'll do a light build. So we're not actually using movable directional lights. And then I actually reduce the movable spotlights down just to three. We're basically just trying to get as much out of this as we possibly can. The next step is our Android settings. So if we go to Android, underneath platforms and we scroll up. I have this set to 25 and 25. We're going to enable package game data inside APK just so it's one file. And I'm actually going to set these to default. So currently I've got support arm v7 enabled and support OpenGL. But having both of these enabled works pretty well for 
for my content. So I'd recommend trying that out when you start your project up. And then we just have package for Oculus mobile device set to Oculus Quest. If you're on 4.26, this should say Quest 1 and Quest 2. So just give that a shot. And then remove Oculus Signature files from distribution APK. This needs to be set to true, otherwise your headset, I don't think the application will launch. So just make sure that's true. And then we can go down to our Oculus VR tab. I'm not gonna worry about launching Oculus performance window because it's probably gonna tell me to do some stuff. So yeah, it's just tell me about dynamic lights. But you see that we've removed uh, quite a bit anyway. I don't know why on this version I'm not seeing color correction, which is a weird one. But normally you would have a choose a specific color gamut and then you would select quest. Uh, what we'll do is we'll restart the editor and we'll see what happens. So restart now, save selected. So this will take a couple of minutes because we changed forward rendering. So we're gonna have to compile all our shaders again which is why it's recommended to do this on a, a demo scene or a empty project. Okay, so that took forever to recompile all the shaders. And you can see that we've got too many overlapping shadows, movable lights, shadow casting disabled, point lights number five. So it'll be one of these. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set these to stationary and I'm just gonna reduce the radius to 100 just because these are only for the example. So that should be okay. And I think I should actually be able to build lightning now. Okay, so hopefully this should work. If we do a build, we should get some shadows. Okay, so we've got some lightning in the scene. It's not perfect, but that might be world settings that we need to change. So let's have a look at light mass. I'm just gonna set these all back to default. We'll use ambient occlusion. And then we'll just redo this. Excellent. So the lighting's definitely not perfect or anything along them lines. I've made some changes to my light settings just so I could make it a little bit nicer. And I'm gonna quickly change the light map resolution. And for some reason, BSPs, you need to go backwards. <laughs> so I tried upping this. This is just me ranting. 256, it didn't work. But if I go down to eight, I think we will get sharper shadows. So I set that to eight. So I'm going to do a build and then we'll actually build it to the headset and we'll be able to see what the performance is like. So that didn't take too long to bake. And yes, for some reason, you've got to go lower on the light map resolution to get better quality shadows for BSP. So keep that in mind. I would recommend not using them. But um, yeah, let's do a build and we'll see what the performance difference is like. So we've got project launcher, launch. And if you remember, we've got everything enabled as before, apart from four times MSAA. So we'll do this build. We'll compare the settings in Oculus Developer Hub or the GPU load is specifically what we're after. And then we'll compare that to enabling MSA and what it will go up to. Excellent. So we're back. Let's put the headset on so it loads up the scene and we're in the headset. We can see everything. Actually looks pretty damn good, to be honest, even without MSA and what we're at. So our CPU load is about 33%, going up to a bit higher based on whereabouts I look in the scene. So if I turn around and I go the opposite direction, so I'm essentially facing at the minute this back wall here. And you can see now that we dropped from 99% and we're, we're staying steady at about 70, which is pretty damn good for what we're doing here. Our FPS is a solid 72. So this is what I'd suggest aiming for when you start your project is settings roughly like this because what we can do now is if i close on the headset so if i quit out then this should finish exactly how we want it and now if we go to edit project settings and we go to where are you rendering and we now enable msaa we'll do four times i don't recommend going up to eight because you're just going to kill performance for no reason so four times We'll close that. That's the only difference we're going to change. And we're going to go to STC by the book. We'll do the exact same thing and we'll come back in a second. Okay, so this time we've built with MSAA times four. So we put this on, but it's actually holding pretty steady at 70. That's really cool. Even I wasn't expecting that. So 
yeah, so hopefully this covers quite a bit for you and can help you maybe reduce some of the settings in your project, get some better quality. So yeah, so if you're having issues with your project, maybe try some of these settings out. If not all of them, I highly recommend it. Don't worry about that one error. It's just going to be about screen size or maybe a weight frame. But um, yeah, let me know how you guys get on with it. Tell me if there's any issues, what works, what doesn't. I'd love it if you could jump over to the Discord as well and maybe suggest some stuff in the comments of what you do to optimize your stuff. I do have some more stuff that I can go over in a later video, but this one's starting to get on now. So we'll wrap it there. Big thank you to Patreons for making this possible and everyone on the Discord who asked for the video, essentially. If you've got a recommendation or there's something you want to see, just let me know. And until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.